Earlier in the show, I mentioned this story in The Age and City Morning Herald reporting a ludicrous falsehood as fact. The 12 women detained on Christmas Island had tried to kill themselves so Australia would have to take their orphaned children. And that claim was false. At most, just one woman may have attempted suicide, jumping off a small building and not for the sake of any child. The Age did report those facts the next day, but without saying, sorry, we got it badly wrong with our first mad story. Joining me is Sherry Marks, a media editor of The Australian. Sherry, good morning. And how could The Age have reported such a stupid story as true? Well, it was The Age and the Sydney Morning Herald, which actually ran it prominently on its front page. The very story was ludicrous. The idea that 12 women would commit suicide, leaving 12 orphaned babies, just so that those babies could be to get to uh, mainland Australia, was ridiculous. I don't know how any news desk or any journalist could, uh, in all good faith, believe that that was the case. The story by 8 a.m. Wednesday morning was proved to be incorrect. Uh, you know, it, it, there was people on ABC Radio first thing that morning questioning its accuracy and of course it was wrong as you say only one woman had attempted suicide you know what the Australian ran this amazing story on Friday morning where you had the former director director of offshore processing Greg Lake speak about how the refugee movement actually encourages people to attempt self-harm so that they can put out a press release and embarrass the government and it becomes a big political issue so that is disgraceful the reports in the media were disgraceful, and yet, if you were expecting an, an apology from Fairfax, you'd be wrong, Andrew. <laughs> to be honest, I wasn't. But it just goes to a disposition to believe the worst, to report the most ludicrous worst as fact, and not apologise for it afterwards. I don't think you can trust a lot of reporting on this issue, boats, or on global warming for the same reason. Why do refugee advocates and the Greens tell so many untruths about boat people? Three examples just this week. First, the Abbott government this week sent 41 boat people back to Sri Lanka. Disgraceful, said Labor and the Greens. These were real refugees sent back to their persecutors. Sri Lankan asylum seekers have been returned to Sri Lanka, the persecuted to the persecutor. Handing over Tamil um, refugees Tamils seeking asylum, some of which will certainly have genuine claims to Sri Lankan government, is really, really concerning. Former Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser even claimed sending back these Sri Lankans was like sending back Jews to Nazi Germany. A lot of journalists made out these people would never be seen again. Why can't the Australian people know how they're being treated? I mean, since when does our government disappear people? Look, uh, we don't disappear people, and with respect, uh, that sort of description does you uh, no credit. 41 refugees from another boat intercepted in Australian waters were handed back to Sri Lankan authorities and threatened with torture. Now, the truth. Sri Lanka is a democracy, not a Nazi regime. In fact, the UN says it's helped 11,000 refugees return to Sri Lanka and the Gillard government even boasted it forced back 1,000 against their will. Former Labor Foreign Minister Bob Carr this week said not one was then persecuted. I remember repeatedly our High Commission in Colombo saying there is no evidence of mistreatment of those we are returning. And these latest 41 Sri Lankans are almost certainly not refugees. Maybe a dozen have told reporters the same story. They were just coming here for work. As Fairfax reporter Jason Kutsukas tweeted, every one of the ones he interviewed when they first returned this week admitted they were economic refugees, not real ones. Only later did three claim, wait, they were fleeing gangsters or something. Christine Milne, Malcolm Fraser, you should say sorry. Second example. Now refugee activists insist a second boat carrying 153 Sri Lankans must not be sent back either because, here we go again, that analogy with Nazi Germany, this time from a lawyer acting for these boat people. And I remember uh, m uh, you know, people being, Jewish people being handed back to the Nazis and death and, and harm, and I'm not going to see that happen again. But guess what? This ship actually came from India. 
Most, perhaps all the passengers, were living there in safety, in established refugee camps. Again, they were coming here for work or welfare. And the government isn't planning to send them to Sri Lanka, but it hopes back to India. Last example, this bizarre claim reported as fact that a dozen women detained on Christmas Island tried to kill themselves so Australia would be forced to take their orphan children. No, wait, it was 10 women, claimed the Human Rights Commission. We've had reports that have been confirmed during the day that uh, 10 women have attempted suicide. As if. Here are the facts. Now, a small number of minor self-harm incidents have recently occurred and those involved are receiving proper and appropriate medical and other support. Yes, one woman did reportedly jump off a low building in what's claimed to be a suicide attempt. But it seems she wasn't even a mother or doing it for the kids. Refugee advocates claim to be more moral. Then why all these falsehoods?